This video is created specifically for a 1986 Firebird 2.8 liter multi-port fuel injected engine. Any engine where you can't remove the valve covers easily while the engine is running would also be applicable to this particular video. If your valve covers are removable during engine running, then the adjustment is quite simple. And you can find that any place on the internet. However, if you have to do a static valve adjustment, such as in this case, then this video is very good and will explain to you exactly how it's done. This video will go much deeper than shown in this simplified picture of how the hydraulic valve lifter works. In addition, we're not going to go into every little detail such as shown in this picture of the hydraulic tappet. We're going to keep it at a layman's terms level, which explains how it works completely, but yet it's not too technical. There are two types of static valve lifter adjustment. One is where the lifter has oil in it, and the other is where the lifter has no oil in it. This oil can be never there in the first place, such as a new lifter without soaking it in oil, or the oil can be squeezed down by valve spring pressure, which is called a leak down of the lifter, or collapse of the lifter. In either case, there's two types of adjustments. When there's air in the lifter, then the adjustment's quite simple. And when the engine's been ran, you have hydraulic oil in the lifter. You have to follow the procedures described in this video if you want success. I also want to point out that once these problems were detected on this vehicle, the vehicle set for five years after the engine rebuild before there was time to get back to this project. So you're going to see rust from the humidity here in Florida, and you're going to see dirt that's accumulated on various parts. The engine was real clean when it was assembled and first ran, but it's set for five years before this video was made. My problems all began when I decided to rebuild this 1986 Firebird 2.8 liter multi-port fuel injected engine. The rebuild went fine, all new parts were used, everything was done in the correct manner. As you can see when it's assembled, there's not much room to get the valve covers off of this engine. So the valve lice must be set statically. Once the engine was reassembled, it was placed back into the car and all the connections were made and the engine was started. Upon initial startup, it had a lifter rattle. It sounded like one cylinder had a lifter rattle. And much to our dismay, there was a trail of blue smoke coming out the exhaust all the time at idles, so even after it ran for a couple of hours. So we had to find out what was the cause of this blue smoke. Imagine our surprise when we discovered these stem seals are different than most vehicles. They have 12 square O-rings included in the stem seal kit. And our valves are like the valve on the left here, which has double grooves instead of a single groove. These installed square O-rings look like shown in this picture here, and they apparently keep oil from running down all the valve stems. It was also decided that someone must have left the oil stem seals off the intake valves when the heads were assembled by a head shop. So the valve covers have to come off to check this out. It was also noted that during engine startup, the oil pressure shot up to 80 pounds oil pressure, and that's not normal. So we decided we're going to have to pull the pan, pull the oil pump, find out why the oil stock oil pump was putting out 80 pounds of PSI, because it should be down around 50 pounds. As you can see from these pictures, Getting the valve covers off is not something you want to do every day. There's much disassembly. You've got to pull the plenums. You've got to pull the fuel injector rails. You've got to pull the crossover intake pipes. And it's just a disaster. Even after you do all of this, then to get the valve covers off, you still have to take the rear valve cover studs on the passenger side to clear the distributor and on the driver's side to clear the windshield wiper motor. Upon removal of the oil pan and the oil pump, it was found that there was a pink spring inside the oil pump instead of a green spring. The pink spring causes 80 PSI before the relief, oil relief takes place, and we wanted a green spring, which causes 50 PSI, so we installed a new green spring put the pump back in place and put the oil pan back in place and now turn to the 
lifter problem. When we removed that first intake valve spring, we found that the normal spring-loaded seal was there, but the square O-ring was missing. Then we took off a, an exhaust valve spring, and the same thing, the square O-ring was missing. You can't see these seals with the springs installed. They have to be removed in order to see them because of the damper spring inside the main valve spring, which hides their visibility. You also can't see the square O-rings because the spring cap hides the square O-rings from view when the spring's installed. So it also has to be removed in order to even see if there's square O-rings there or not. I created this two-page article which explains exactly how the lifters work and why you have to be careful how you adjust them. If you read these two pages, you will fully understand hydraulic lifters. There will be no doubt in your mind. You'll fully understand what has to be done to adjust them properly. If you don't read these two pages, then that's your problem. It's not my problem. At the end of the video, I, just, I show an example of a hydraulic lifter that is bled down and can be adjusted. And I show you an example of a hydraulic lifter which is still oil locked and it can't be adjusted properly. Page one explains how you do the adjustment. And page two explains how the hydraulic lifter works and therefore why you should do the adjustment this way. If you read the two previous pages, then you'll fully understand this video. The push rod on the right is leaked down and can be adjusted. The push rod on the left is still in hydraulic lock and it cannot be adjusted. If you adjust this one, you're in trouble. In closing, we have demonstrated here in this picture the correct adjustment as specified by General Motors for the hydraulic valve lifters. They recommend one and a half turns after zero lash. And as you can see, Based on the thread size, this equals 63 thousandths. Most engine rebuilders also specify 60 thousandths. So therefore, the GM spec is right on the money. And both of them leave the piston at the top part of the piston travel, so you can never end up with a valve that doesn't fully close. I specified here in this printout, the JB2095 is a lifter we measured to find its maximum piston travel, which is 275 thousandths. After performing step number 8A on the first page, as described earlier, we found that cylinder number 5 intake lifter would not leak down. It just stayed high all the time. We left full valve spring force on it for two days, continuous, and it never leaked down. So the lifter has a problem. So, of course, the repair replace the lifter, have to pull the intake center head, which means you got to pull the distributor because you can't get to the bolts, and you also have to drain the water. Once I got the lifter out, I found a bunch of black, dirty debris in the bottom of that lifter piston cylinder. Apparently, this debris would not let that lifter collapse, and we suspect that was a manufacturing problem. That stuff was left in there during manufacture of the lifter because we never had the lifter apart. All the other lifters collapsed properly. We also don't believe that that dirty black substance came from our engine because the engine was very clean. It was thoroughly cleaned. Oil pump was new. Everything was new. There might have been some machine shavings or something, but this was, looked like black dirt and black oil. All the rest of the oil in this engine is clean, clear oil. So that's the end of this video. I hope it, you benefited from it. And do things right, don't have to do them over.